Alhamdulillah, we are blessed to be alive and see these blessing moments, month of Sha'ban, and coming soon, inshallah, the month of Ramadan, may Allah give us life to experience it. But from the time that human beings were created, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed to create, He didn't have to create, He willed to create out of love. His creation, everything in the creation is in this existence out of love of Allah. There's nothing here that Allah hates. If Allah hated it, He wouldn't create it. So everything that exists, the dog and the pigs, it's here and they're fulfilling a purpose. But amongst all of the creation, Allah, the, the, the arus of creation, the bride of creation were the human being. When Allah created it, told the angel, with qala rabbuka lil malaika inni ja'alu fil ardi khalifa i'm going to create a khalifa a, a caretaker the head of all of this creation on this earth and then when allah created the human being and blew into the human being from his spirit it was then that we had the form and we got the meaning it was a it was a complete what the, what we would call an insanul kamil adam alayhi salam and then how are from adam and then he said to them that go ahead, uskun zawj, you and your zawj, wa zawjuka, al jannah. Go ahead, you and your wife, you may reside in paradise. So both of them were taken to paradise after being created on earth and they experienced paradise. What is the experience of paradise? At the essence of paradise is sa'ada, is happiness. It's a place of ultimate happiness. This is the only time that you would experience happiness in this dunya. And then once they were in paradise, they experienced this happiness, then they disobeyed, they ate from the tree, from the fruit that Allah says don't. They went to that shajar, to that tree. And this is human nature, right? And this is all in the plan of God. Don't think that Allah was unaware of what was happening there. Everything is in the plan of Allah. They were sent down back to the earth to do time. We are doing time here. That's all it is. You are in doing time. A dunya sijnul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. This dunya is a prison of the believer and a paradise for disbelievers. Because we're doing time and we're trying to get out with, with, with good behavior in order to enter back to the abode of happiness. Paradise. So from the time that Adam came back to the earth, he was in pursuit of what he experienced in paradise, which is happiness. And this is why if you read every tradition, from Socrates to Al-Ghazali, you would come to the same conclusion that human being, we are in pursuit of happiness. No matter what we do in our life, is the ultimate good, is to find happiness. We want to find sa'ada. We want to live a happy life. You ask anybody, whatever they want, I want to become a doctor. Why? Because I know if I become a doctor, I'll be happy. Because the ultimate goal of life is sa'ada, is happiness. So, when you look at the creation, everything in God's creation is happy. Because they know why they were created. The fact that Allah willed is enough to be happy. And this is why the roses, as they open up and they smile, right? And as they bloom and they laugh, and joy and ecstasy is because they know that God willed for them to be in this dunya and exist. And the fact that they exist is because of God's will. That is enough for them to be joyful and happy. This is why the raindrops, when they come down, they come down in a state of wajd and dancing. In his spiritual high, because they know Allah willed for them to, to exist. This is why everything in the creation, the waterfall, is, is laughing as they're coming down. What can the creation do except joy and happiness? Because they know that God will. Allah is Allah willed for them to exist. Isn't that enough reason to be happy? Rumi says, Gola Khandon kina khanda chikuna. He said, what can the flowers do except smiling and laughing? They can't do anything else because they know the reason for their creation. Right? 
They know sa'ada, happiness. This is the reason. But human being, because we are people of ikhtiyar, we are the creation that we have a choice. We decide to be happy, we decide, we make ourselves miserable. We live miserable lives. Who does it? We do it to ourselves. And this is why the tradition, our tradition, this, this religion, this deen, the teaching of our religion is one thing. Find sa'ada. You were brought here to find happiness. And how do you find happiness? One of the great scholars of our, ta- of, of, of our deen put together a formula for happiness. The five things, these are alama, these are signs of the people of happiness. And if you see these signs in those people, know that they're happy. And if you want to be happy, the goal of this life, follow these rules and you would see how you become happy. Number one is to earn a soft heart through the worship of Allah. In other words, what he's saying is that the reality of worship of ibadah is supposed to give you a soft heart. Ibadah is supposed to make you soft and gentle. The Prophet ﷺ was the gentlest of the human being. He was soft and gentle. He said, Al-Mu'minu hayyan wa layyan. The nature, the primary nature of a mu'min, of a believer, that he is soft and gentle. This is the primary nature of a, of a believer. To earn a soft heart, because sometimes our hearts are hard. And you make your heart soft through the worship of Allah. If that worship is done without riya, without showing off, that worship is for God. If the worship, if the sajda is for God, that sajda will change your life. If the fasting is for God, that fasting will change your life. If you do the worship sincerely, as though nobody is there on this planet to watch you, And the only one that's watching you is Allah, which is the reality of your worship. Nobody cares about your worship. No matter how long you make your sajda at the masjid, nobody cares. The one that cares is Allah. The one that's watching you is Allah. The one that's watching you is the angels. The untold number of angels are watching you. And if your prayer is really from the heart, it will make your heart soft. In every act of worship, no matter where they start from, Right? Because we have different adhkar. We have the dhikr of the tongue. It starts with the tongue, but it reaches the heart. This is the highest level of dhikr. You start saying subhanallah, subhanallah on your tongue. And one day, your heart will start saying subhanallah with your tongue. And it reaches the heart. Everything that you do, you give charity with your hand, then your heart will start giving charity. It's your heart that pushes your hand to give. You do dhikr of your feet, which is to visit your aqarim, those family members that have a right over you, then your heart would tell your feet, you need to visit your family members that have a right over you. You have different aqar, all, everything that you do, it reaches the heart. The same way we do foul things, it reaches the heart. So you can make your heart hard or soft. That's the number one characteristics of people of sa'ada, people of happiness. Number two is those people who shed tears from the fear and awe of God. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifests himself in two ways. Jalal and Jamal. Beauty and majesty. So when you go and you see the waterfall coming down, you see the beauty. This is the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's showing you but then when the tsunami comes, when you see the tsunami is coming, what do you do? That's the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In both situations, what do you say? When you see the waterfall, you say, subhanallah. When you see the tsunami, you say, subhanallah. Because you see, it's from the same source. That on that day when we stand in front of Allah, it's the day that He will show His majesty. Because these things that the Prophet taught us, they are not fairy tales. My brothers, my sisters, my beloved, the Prophet said, Al Jannah Haq, Wa Nar Haq, Wa Sirat Haq, and Wallahi, he is not a liar. Even the Kuffar, when they looked at his face, he said, This is not a face of a liar. We disagree with him, we don't like him, we're gonna fight him, but this is not a face of a liar. 
He said, paradise is real, my friend. It's not a matrix. It's not, it's not a Disney movie. And the fire of hell is real. It's not a movie. And the sirat that you have to cross over is real. These are realities that each and every one of us will experience on that day. These are realities that our Prophet told us. So shed tears, and tears only come from the heart that is soft. From because people don't know the value of tears. People don't know. Mawlana Rumi said, Giriyaha iqdi guhar mi shabat az dawlat shab qatrayi ashki saharra basurayya mafurush. This is uh, from one of the contemporary poet, Mahdi Suhaili. He said that all your tears that you shed in the midnight hours, they turn themselves into a priceless necklace of pearl. Every drop of tears is a priceless necklace of pearl. He said, please, my friend, don't be a fool. Don't sell your tears for pleadings. Don't sell your tears for the stars. For the heavens and the earth. If you knew the value of tears. Rumi has a story in the Muslim about a man who had a dog and his dog was thirsty. And he, and he, he started crying and he's shedding tears. Oh my dog, my dog is thirsty. He's dying of thirst. Oh my dog, my dog is... He's just crying and shedding tears. A man passed by and said, what's the problem? He said, my dog is dying from thirst. And you know, I love my dog. He said, you have no water? He said, no, I have water. But I paid for the water and tears are free. And Rumi said, if you knew the value of your tears, you would give all of the water of the world to that dog. But we don't know the value of tears. And this is why our eyes are dry. Because our hearts have become hard. That's number two. Number three characteristics of the people of happiness. These are those who came late, the five, the five characteristics of the people of happiness. That they don't have any desire for the dunya. They don't have any desire. This doesn't mean they're poor. They're some of the richest people. That means that the dunya is in their hand and not in their heart. It's in their hand but not in their hearts. Because once the dunya enters your heart, it will make your heart hard. You have to keep the dunya in your hand. Know the reality of dunya. Al dunya mal'una. This dunya is cursed. Don't, don't get too preoccupied in the dunya. This is the nature of dunya. This is the nature of dunya that it preoccupies you. Imam Shafi said, Ya man bi dunyahu an shagal wa gharrahu tulul amal al mawtu ya'ti baghdatan wal qabru sanduq al amal. He said, Don't let this dunya will delude you. That you will live a long time. This is the nature of dunya, it's a delusion. Darul Gurur. Right? You will live a long time. Enjoy it. And, 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 and just have high hopes. Keep going, keep going. You will live forever. But know that death comes suddenly without any notification. When death comes, it's not going to send you a message. It's not, you're not going to get any, any uh, on your inbox. Open this. No. It comes suddenly without any notification. And what you're going to take with you is just a sanduq, a box of your action, which is the sanduq that you're going to get buried in. That's all you're going to take in. What are you going to take in the grave? You're not going to take anything with you. This is the reality. This dunya don't, this dunya is darul ghurur. It is an abode of delusion. Don't be deluded by it. وَمَلْ حَيَاتُ الدُّنْيَا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ The Qur'an says, this dunya, the life of dunya is nothing but delusion. It's enjoy, you think, you think you're enjoying it. But it's a delusion, it's going to delude you. This is ghurur. Dar al-surur is in paradise. And this is why Mawlana Rumi constantly remind us, do not trade dar al-surur for dar al-ghurur. Don't trade the abode of happiness for the abode of delusion. This is delusion in comparison to the hereafter, in comparison to paradise. We are burning our abode of happiness and trying to build the abode of delusion. Number four is to have, not to have high hopes. This is a problem of people where we have a 500 years as though we're living for 500 years. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, then I'm going to do this. 
How long are you going to be on this planet Earth? The Prophet sallallahu the greatest teacher, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ مُعَلِّمًا I was sent as a teacher. In other words, he is the greatest teacher that Allah has sent. He drew a line in the sand for the Sahaba. And he told him he was teaching them. He was a mu'allim. He said, this is your life. He drew a straight line. This is, this is your life right here. And on top of it, he drew a line on top, like a T, crossed it. He said, that is your amal. That is your hope. This is what you want to reach. And then below it, he crossed another line. He said, that's your ajr. That's your death. It's going to come way before all of those goals that you have set up in life. Be ready. Don't have, it doesn't mean you don't plan. We plan, but planning within the limits of our lives. Our planning should be in the here, for the hereafter. What plans do we have for akhirah? What are our plans for the hereafter? Do we have any plans? Do we have any plans for the hereafter? And that is what we want to work on. We want to work on planning for the hereafter, not for the dunya. Because this dunya, look, your risk is written. You can't increase or decrease your risk. All you have to do is go out and try to gather it and get it. That's all you have to do. It's written. Right? But what you can achieve in the dunya that you can't in the hereafter is qurba, is closeness to Allah. And you can't do that in, 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 the, in the hereafter. Once you die, you can achieve closeness to Allah after you die. The only time you can achieve qurba, closeness to God, is on the planet Earth. The more you worship Allah, the closer you be to Him on the Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And this is why this life is precious. For the awliya, they love this life for that one reason, that I can worship Allah and be closer when I'm resurrected on the Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Closeness to Qurba of Allah. So this is what they were, this is their, their hope from the dunya. How do I get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Yawm Al Qiyamah? I call the Kauli Hadha Safar Allah in the Hadim al Habib. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidil Mursaleen wa ala ala wa sahbihi ajma'in wa rahmatihi wa rahman rahmeen We are talking about the five categories of people that are people of sa'ada of happiness those who have soft heart those who weep, shed tears uh, out of fear and awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who don't have desire for the dunya the dunya is in their hands and not in their hearts and those um, who don't have really high, their goals are not for the next 200 years. The amal is not too high. They control, they know that they're ready for, that death might come at any time. And the last one, number five, uh, which is, I think is the most important one, is something that we're losing at the time that we're living in. And may Allah put this in the hearts of us, our families, in our children, in our offspring, until the Yom Al-Qiyamah, is to live a life based on haya, on modesty. Those people of Sa'ada, they always, their life, they have a life of haya in modesty. Because at the foundation of this religion is modesty. The Prophet ﷺ was the most modest of the human being. He said, لِكُلِّ دِينٍ خُلَقُ الْإِسْلَامِ الْحَيَا and every deen, every religion has a primary characteristic. And the primary characteristics of my religion is haya, is modesty. Al haya min al iman. He said that haya is from iman. In other words, the more modest you are, the more your iman will increase. It's like you put more haya, iman will go up automatically. And he said, haya in iman are intertwined. They are together. And they go together. When one goes, the other one goes. And this is the tragedy of the time that we are living in. We are living in a time as do as thou wealth shall be the whole of the law. This is what they are preaching to our children. Do whatever you want. Do as you please. 
In other words, have no haya. Because they know they can't take away your religion. They know that. Nobody is going to come and tell you, leave your religion. You're going to punch them in the face. But they will tell you, come on man, what is this? Take that off. Where, come on, make it, make your clothes, loosen up, loosen up, loosen up. Because they know, as haya goes, so does faith, so does iman. Goes from your heart. And this is the way of shaitan. He wants to take your modesty away from you and from your children in order for them to lose their religion. And this is the foundation of our religion is Haya. The Prophet ﷺ, all of the companions, his wives, his children, the Tabi'in, the Tabu Tabi'in. You go through the history of Islam. What was the foundational characteristics of all of those people that we read their lives? Haya, the modest people. They had Haya. Lowered their gaze. And this is what our Prophet brought to us is a religion that is modest. From every aspect, our lifestyle is modest, our character is modest, the way we dress is modest, the way we eat is modest, the way we walk, everything about us. Modesty is at every limb of our body, not just our eyes, not just our eyes. And this is the, the five characteristics of people of Sahara. And I'll end with most people they go through depression, sadness. People are depressed, a lot of people who are depressed and they're taking medicine, Prozac. Medicine, and this is what we have learned from our teachers, it will not cure your depression because depression, sadness, is not a psychological state. It's a spiritual state. And you cannot treat it with medicine. It's a spiritual state. Happiness is a spiritual state of being. You have to be spiritually happy in order to be happy. That's how you experience happiness in life. It's, a spirit. it's not people go shopping therapy when they get depressed. No matter how much you shop, you have unlimited credit cards and you shop everything on this planet. Every purse and every car and every house and every shoe and every name brand you buy and you put it on you, you're still going to be miserable and depressed. Because it's not a physical state, depression. It's not a psychological state. It's a spiritual state. And if you want to be happy, you have to change your spiritual state. You have to change your spiritual state. And the Quran is clear. We have not seen this Quran. Litashqa, for you to be unhappy, for you to be depressed. That's not the reason for that revelation. In other words, we sent this Quran for you to be happy. This is the remedy of happiness is in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> That's what happiness is, is in the book of Allah. It's not in shopping therapy. It's not in medicine. The happiness in our ummah, and if you look, People in our ummah, and we see, you can see this in every generation. You have friends that are like that. They could be in a state of pain and suffering, and yet they're happy. Why? Why would someone who has pain and suffering happy? Why? Because they know, like Rumi said, as Hamanjo Kerasadan, Hamanjo as Dawa. Because they know that the one who gave them the pain is the same one who's going to give them the healing. They know that the pain came from the beloved. I'm happy. I'm happy. Just like the rose is laughing because of the fact that Allah willed for it to exist, they're happy. If it comes from Him, I'm happy. Because they have a spiritual connection with God. And this is what we are losing. We are losing our spiritual connection and we are trying to remedy that through shopping therapy, through financial. It's, nothing is going to bring you happiness in this world except your spiritual connection with the divine. Nothing is going to bring you happiness except your connection, spiritual connection with the divine. And this is the mercy of Allah that He gives us Ramadan. This is the mercy of Allah that if we waver throughout the year, if we stay away, if the dunya is taking us over, if we lose all these five characteristics that our hearts becoming hard, we don't shed tears, 
our amal, we want all this dunya, maqam and stations, right? All of those happen, we lose our modesty, Ramadan comes. It says, come, let's come back together. And Allah is reminding us, giving us this gift of Ramadan. And everybody, you can see people come and everyone takes on these characteristics. It's, it's obvious and every masjid you go, you see people with all of these. Because these are what they call things that have been tested by generation and generation of people to attain happiness. And may Allah make us amongst the people who reach the station of sa'ada, of happiness. That we are happy in the dunya and we are happy in the hereafter. And when we rise on the yawm al qiyamah, the Prophet is pleased with us and Allah is pleased with our action. Inshallah ta'ala. In alhamdulillahi na'madu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'afiru wa na'audhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Man yahdihi Allah fala mudilla la, man yudli fala hadi la, wa shiru la ilaha illallah wa ahdu bila sharika la, wa shiru anna muhammad al-abduhu wa rasuluhu. أرسله بالهدى بشيرا ونذيرا قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في قرآن مجيد إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمة يوم أبي بكر وشرفه بأمر الله أمر وصدق محيان رسمان وقبهم عليا وفاتم سيدة النساء أهل الجنة والحسن والبسن سيدة شباب أهل الجنة وحمد أصد الله وأصد الرسول خير القرون قرن ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القرب ويرحى عن الفحشاء والمنكر وطغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا لي أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تذكرون وذكروا الله أكبر واقيموا الصلاة